Hello everyone and welcome back to the Envelope Art Academy. Today we are going to be working on an envelope that has an elephant on it. And this is a card from Petra Boss and this was included in the most recent set of our one per week subscription box, uh, Pleasantly Purple. Yes, the, the elephant is gray, but the balloon inside, the paper balloon inside is purple. So we're gonna do a little bit of play on that and make our elephant part purple, part gray. And the tools that we are using today is our Envelope Art Academy palette of paints. We're going to be using the Micron pen, the Etcher Lab paint brushes, which I love. What else, what else? Oh, the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Um, this is on our Amazon shopping page. And what else? I think that's about it. So what we'll do is get started. I'm going to scoot this back just a little bit. You see, I'm using the same colors as I always do. And what we're going to do is start by putting our return address on the envelope. I don't oftentimes start with that step, but in this case, I really want the elephant to be as big as possible. So I want to make sure to have plenty of space allocated on the envelope. Okay, so the other thing, I'm gonna put the balloon out of the way. I'm gonna set our elephant here for some guidelines. And we are going to use a pen to outline um, the elephant so that we have somewhat of a guide on our envelope, if that makes sense. Sometimes we use pencil and we erase that, but today we're going to just jump right in with the pen. Now, remember, this is not watercolor paper, and the whole idea is to relieve ourselves of the need for perfection, so we're not gonna worry if our elephant doesn't turn out exactly like this. When I start with these kind of illustrations, I want to obviously leave room down here to address my envelope. I'm gonna take a look at this guy and I see that he's got two big ears. I might not get the entire body on there, but I definitely want the nose and, or the snout and the um, party hat. So if I want the snout to head to the bottom of the page, we may, maybe we will do the whole thing. Let's see. Let's see how much space we have. Let's start with the bottom. So let's start with the snout. We're going to make the curve. We're gonna come up here and go wide and come up here and go wide on this side. So that gives us a guideline for where the elephant's face is going to be. I also know that somehow in here I'm going to have the party hat, so I might put the party hat off to the side. So we're going to curve around here. We're going to dip in and around and make some big ears. Come down, come up around the top of the head. And what I love about envelope art is the intention is to run it off the page so that you don't have to worry about all the details, which is okay. Now, that's pretty good, I'd say. We're gonna make our eyes off to the side here. And yes, we're gonna add some white in there. Okay, and then we're going to give our ears a little bit more shape. We're gonna give this ear a little bit more shape. Okay, and then I am going to take my party hat and I am going to run that alongside here and I'm gonna make it really different. Kind of looks like a Santa's hat, but I think it will be fun to have something a little bit different. Also, I didn't wanna run into my address. You can see why I needed to put the address first. All right, then let's make this guy nice and beefy. Okay. And then we're gonna make his legs run off the paper. How's that sound? We're gonna put a little bit of crease right down the middle. And then somewhere back here is his tail. Okay, 
we're gonna run that with some black paint. Okay. What else are we missing here? Uh, we need to make the inset of our eyes, so we're gonna wanna do that in black. And we're gonna make this eye. And then for these panels right here, I think I will leave those and I'll use paint for that. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up my paint in here and I will do this on a time-lapse video so that it doesn't take up too much of our time. I'm going to mix up some gray and I'm going, oops, here you go. I'm gonna mix up some of the gray. I'm gonna add some blue to the gray to make it a little bit darker. And then I'm going to mix some of our purple and gray to make a shade of lavender. And I'm going to pull in some of this pink from the balloon. That's the inside of the ear. So I'm going to mix up our two shades of pink to um, have a good shade of pink for the ears. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is utilize some of these colors to paint our elephant and I'm going to slide this guy a little bit higher up on the screen so that you can see it but I really want you to see the envelope. So I am going to use our shade of gray which I added some gray, I added a little bit of our blue and believe it or not I added a little bit of the brown to give it a nice darker shade. Okay, here's some more. I know I felt like as soon as I started recording, I might need a little bit more of that. So we are going to make the body of our elephant this nice dark shade. There we go, nice dark shade of gray. Okay, remember this is not envelope. I mean, this is not watercolor paper. I want to say that every time in case you're new here because I don't want you to be disappointed in how the envelope takes to the paint or vice versa, how the paint takes to the envelope. The whole idea is to enjoy the process and know what you're doing is something fun and creative for the recipient. But this kind of paper will not tolerate tolerate a lot of layering and it will not tolerate a lot of shading. So you definitely want your paint to be as opaque as possible versus as watery as possible. Does that make sense? Sometimes when we're working with watercolors on watercolor paper, the more water you have, the more transparent you can make it and the more details you can get. But for this, what we're going to do is be a little creative. We're going to make the head of our elephant have a little bit more purple cast to him, just like the um, just like the balloon does. So I thought that would be kind of fun to mix up. All right, so here we go. The head of our giraffe. Uh, I don't know why I keep saying giraffe. The head of our elephant will have a lavender light purple hue of gray if you will all right okay so one of the reasons why i did not want to add those dark lines to the trunk was because i just wasn't sure exactly where i was going to put them whether or not i was going to use paint or whether or not i will wait until he's dry and use my pen to add those lines back in at the very end. That gives you a little bit of freedom when you're painting, not to have to worry about too many details up front. You need more paint, you just quickly clean off your brush. Grab some more purple. Okay. And don't worry if it's not the exact shade. The nice thing about 
this kind of work is that you're not going for precision. You are going for creativity and most importantly, you're going for fun. But I, I suspect this will dry just fine. What I'm going to do is, after I'm done painting this elephant head here, I will pause and let this dry before coming back and doing the next part. I won't make you sit and wait and <laughs> watch that. Usually this paper dries rather quickly, but I'm also going rather quickly, adding quite a bit of paint at once. So um, let's just get a little bit more here. Also, if this is your third video that you're watching with me, you'll notice that I have reoriented the frames to be more horizontal than vertical. Um, this is definitely a learn in progress for me to be on YouTube, so I hope you bear with me as I make some subtle changes to make these videos as user-friendly as possible. I'm also trying to make sure that my camera gives you uh, as much information close up as possible. So if that means I have to add a picture or two of the products I'm using up front, I will, and then I will give a tighter frame so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna continue to let the head dry and what I did was make up a little bit more um, gray paint here so that I can finish up the legs. This is an even slightly darker shade. I am mixing my browns and my grays and my shades of blue to get that gray color. I really like this palette of paint that I've put together because the blending possibilities are endless, which is actually, to be honest, a small surprise to me because I've picked paints from three different professional lines which wasn't originally my intention, but once I started, it really um, gave me some benefits. So once you have this shade of gray, I'm gonna let this guy dry. Once you have this shade of gray, you literally mix in a little bit of this burgundy color, a little bit of our green, a little bit more blue, and you really can get almost a dark shade of black. And I find that to be fascinating as well. So we're gonna use that mixture for our tail. Can you see that? Okay. We're going to use that for our tail. Feel free to give it some wispy lines if you want. We're also gonna use our mixed black for the eye. Remember we have this spot right here that was solid black. Now that we have that mixed, we're gonna use that for the lines on the elephant's uh, tusk, but we're gonna go ahead and wait a few moments to make sure that this purple is all the way dry, okay? Next up, we have the ears, and I thought since the rice paper balloon has pink in the ears, we're gonna go ahead and add some pink to our ears as well. So I've got some light pink mixture You can add just a dot of our dark pink, and that will be the color that we use on the envelope for the inside of the ear. I try to not tempt fate here and have my colors bleed, which I don't think they will. Like I said, this isn't watercolor paper, so luckily you don't get the benefits of watercolor paper. However, if your paint is still a little bit wet, you will have a little bit of bleeding. Quickly grab a little bit more pink here. I'll do this other side. a little bit more. I try to get this all prepared for you in advance, but 
Sometimes it takes a little bit more time. All right, look at this elephant taking plate, taking shape here. Okay, so I've got some orange mixed up here. This is actually a nice light shade of orange, a little bit of yellow. And we are going to use that for the hat. Okay, let's get a little bit darker shade of orange for the base. That's looking good here. I'll grab a little more orange. What I did before that was I just popped a dot of the light gray and that makes it a little bit more milky shade, if you will. So it makes it a nice opaque shade. Add a little bit more orange for the darkest shade and we will make that on the top here. Now, you don't need to do this last step. This bleed proof white is something I use all the time on my envelopes because it is such a wonderful item to have in your toolbox. Um, I'm in the process of setting up my Amazon shop page. I will get those linked in the comments, but one of the beauties of this white is the more water you use, the more transparent it is, but if you just pull it right out of the container, you get a nice opaque white. And as it's called bleed proof white, it really does act, I would say like a gouache, but also you can use it like a watercolor paint. But just that pop on there looks so good on the eyes. Okay. Final step I think to do is to add some of the black to the trunk. So grab some of these and we're just gonna make these with our brush. All right, I think we are done. The final thing I want to show you is how beautiful this balloon is, and I will include, um, I think I have another picture of the balloon all blown up. I don't want to blow this up because I'm actually going to send this card to a friend. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little tutorial, and I'd love for you to subscribe to my page, and I'd also love for you to leave some comments below if you have any questions at all. Thanks for joining me today.